This is everything you need to know about metals and nonmetals for the chemistry regions in under five minutes. Okay, so the periodic table of elements will split up the elements into three major categories, right? The first category is metals. So anything underneath this black line that I'm drawing, anything underneath this line and to the left of this line that I'm drawing right now is what we'll call a metal. Okay, uh, it should go somewhere like this, right? So anything that's to the left or underneath this is again, a metal. Metals are going to tend to give up their electrons in a bond. They're going to tend to form ionic bonds and metallic bonds between one another. Okay, so if a metal is combined with a non-metal, it'll form an ionic bond. If it forms a bond with another metal, it'll be a metallic bond. These types of elements tend to have a high boiling point, a high melting point. They're good conductors of electricity and they are not very brittle. They're very hard, okay? Then the next type of elements that you have to worry about are to the right of this red line, including hydrogen. OK, so to the right of this red line, uh, including hydrogen. OK, so everything over here is what we're going to call a non metal. So non metals are kind of the opposite of metals, right? They're going to have a low density versus metals having a high density. They're going to have a low boiling point, a low melt melting point. They're going to be poor conductors of electricity and they're going to be very brittle. Um, and they're not going to participate in metallic bonds, but if you bond a non-metal with a metal, you're they're going to form ionic bonds, and they're also going to form covalent bonds when you combine them with another non-metal. Okay, so those are the general property differences between non-metals and metals. In between these two, you have what we call metalloids, which are kind of weird in the sense that they both have metallic and non-metallic properties, but that's generally not tested on the regions, right? Just know that these are metalloids and they kind of have both metallic and non-metallic properties. Let's look at some more properties between metals and non-metals. In binding, that's where that's usually where you find where you'll find the difference between metals and non-metals. Again, metals tend to give up their electrons in bonds, whilst non-metals tend to keep their electrons. They don't like to give up their electrons. Uh, metals are going to be larger. They're going to ha usually have larger atomic radii, um, lower first ionization energies, and lower electron negativities. Non-metals are going to tend to have higher electron negativities, lower atomic radii, and higher first ionization energies. Uh, that's because of their atomic numbers um, and other properties that we've gone over in previous videos. So I'm trying to find, or I'm kind of having a hard time finding other differences between metals and non-metals right now. So um, I think that's pretty much it. It's a pretty small topic and, and, and an insignificant topic on the regions, but it's still fun to know and good to know on your test because they might ask a question on it or you know a question might relate to some of those properties. If you ever want to find more properties of elements, remember you could always go in table S. It'll tell you the electron negativity, the ionization energy, the density, the boiling point, the melting point. So if you don't believe what I say, you can for sure compare anything on this side with that side to figure it out. If you're confused about this bottom table, these are also metals. These are just more rare or like rare earth metals kind of. Uh, whatever you'll find, you know, something that's decaying radioactively, you'll usually find it within this group. But other than that, the regions doesn't like to ask about these types of um, metals either way okay one last thing i wanted to touch on is as you go from the left to the right or as you go down a period you're gonna lose metallic character so if the regents ever asks you what happens to metallic or how does metallic character change across the period you can say that it's going to decrease meaning that as you go from the left to the right things are going to behave less and less like metals and more and more like non-metals and that should make sense because what's on the right of the periodic table of elements metals what's on the left non-metals okay so the metallic character decreases from left to right um, and that's all you need to know about metals non-metals and metalloids for the regions